Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about perfectionism. Is it all or nothing with you, no matter the thought or situation? Are your unrealistic standards driving everyone around you nuts? Do you keep push, push, pushing, no matter how many awards you've won? Learn how to release the need to be perfect as we continue our month focusing on being your most awesome self. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired because I'm a recovering perfectionist. I wish I could tell my younger self, you're missing out on life when you're trying to be perfect. There is so much joy to be had and, and you're caught up and I understand why. So I want to be gentle with myself, but I just wish I could give my younger self a big hug. I have my clients strive for good enough, close enough, groovy enough. Pick a word, whatever works for you. You are perfectly imperfect and perfect just the way you are, no matter what. Perfectionism isn't real. It's manufactured. We just can't. We're never going to be that way. It's just not going to happen. So you're perfectly imperfect. I want you to really absorb that and kind of contemplate that, marinate it, roll it around in your head. What does that mean to you? And in the same token, which again might sound a little contradictory, that you're perfect just the way you are. It's not this crazy unachievable standard. You're perfect. You're groovy just the way you are. How do you know if you're a perfectionist? You might be listening or watching and honestly may not know. I know I didn't. I had to have therapy to have it kind of laid out for me. I was in my early 20s and I knew, you know what, something's got to change before I kind of got down my spiritual path and was very fortunate. I have a huge shout out for today when I lived in Vermont and actually when I did the dedications in my book or acknowledgements or I'd like to call them gratitudes, I put Kim down because she was so amazing. So here are some signs that you might be trying to be Little Miss Perfect as the song goes. All or nothing. This used to be how I think about everything. And huge shout out to the German heritage on this one. So when you think like this, you're never satisfied with the job that you do. Even if you achieve something, you still view it as a failure, even if you're almost perfect. Perfectionists tend to think in terms of really rigid dichotomies, black, white, all nothing, success, failure, complete everything or don't do it at all. Is that you? Do you have that thinking? Have you started a project and then thought, you know what, I can't complete everything at my high standard. I'm just not going to do it at all. Criticism. You are critical of yourself way more than others. I like to say a lot and encourage my clients and encourage you to be your own best friend and not your own worst enemy. You know, I remember one time getting really annoyed at myself, had these high standards of learning Excel or trying to be able to do something in Excel and get really frustrated. And then I stepped back for a moment and said, you don't know how to do Excel. And you do Word really well. You do PowerPoint pretty well. You know, you're not, Excel's not your strongest suit. So quit frustrating yourself and beating yourself up and saying mean things to yourself and ask for support. You can spot any mistake you make and what was wrong with what you said or did. It's kind of like that mental hamster monkey mind. 
You also tend to let others know what they did wrong too. You judge yourself a lot and you're hard on yourself. You could probably recite every mistake you've done since you were a kid. And when you criticize people all the time, they're just not going to want to be involved with you. At some point, they're going to step away. And so think about that. Is that. Do you have any friendships, relationships right now that's going on with that? I read this recently and it made a lot of sense to me. I'd never heard it, but they called it push versus pull. High achievers tend to be pulled towards their goal by a desire to achieve them and are happy with any steps made in the right direction. That quote, right? It's about the journey. It's not exactly necessarily about the end point. I used to think there was some end point I was going to get to at the end of life. And I'm like, ah, it's just kind of a spiral. We'll go up, we'll go down. There is kind of no more ending that I feel myself racing towards. If you're perfectionist, you're going to tend to be pushed towards your goal by fear of not reaching them and seeing anything less as a perfectly met goal's failure. You know, we can't control life. There are things that happen. I used to do grant writing before I started my job and started my business. And I applied, I was hired by, as a consultant to write these grants, these big USDA telemedicine and telelearning grants. So I did, I think that year three or four as a consultant through someone and none of them got awarded. Well, that year, Susan Collins was on, I want to say on the USDA committee and guess what? Maine got like nine or 10 of those grants. They had no control over politics and everything that went behind the scenes because that tends to happen with those type of things. That didn't mean that I didn't write an awesome grant. That didn't mean that there was worth in what I did. I had zero control over that. So I didn't view that as a failure. Like, oh, there are certain factors out of my control. Is that you? Are you being pushed towards your goal? Pulled. I can't get no satisfaction. Out of all the awards, the accolade, it's never enough for you. There's always something more you can achieve. It's all about the end product. What do I have? The journey doesn't matter. No matter what, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never good enough. Say this like the broken record. You're good enough, you're worthy, and you're loved no matter what. Don't forget that. Now, here's a surprising one. Procrastination. I've seen this in a couple of my clients. You may not complete something because it won't turn out how you'd really like it to or you'll be disappointed in yourself. So rather than take that risk, you don't and you procrastinate on it. And another thing that fuels that fire is you don't want to hand in or show anyone or promote anything that isn't the best ever. So we've got that procrastination going on. And one of the things that drives the procrastination kind of underneath, you know, you've listened for a while. I talk about layers, like a lot of times under anger is great sadness and you keep going through those layers. But sometimes a push behind procrastination is your fear of failure. You know, they said when I first started my business, someone that was mentoring me said, fake it till you make it. You might feel like you're an imposter or you're putting the wool over someone's eyes because you place so much emphasis on the result that you feel like you fail, even if it isn't perfect. I mentioned the grant that I did earlier. I wrote these awesome grants that didn't funded. That wasn't my fault. That didn't mean I failed. On one hand, you say, well, you didn't get the money, you failed. Yes, and I don't have a politician in my pocket. I had no control over that. So I could say I succeeded because I did really four really awesome grants and I did the best that I could. If it's less than perfect to perfectionists, then it's seen as failure. And that's a vicious cycle. So you procrastinate, you have this fear of failing. It's kind of all tied together. And you put this pressure on yourself to be the best at everything all the time. Isn't that an exhausting way to live? Unrealistic standards. I know this all too well. While you can set your goals high and try to push yourself if you are perfectionist, your standards are just, no one can get them. There's often no way that they can be met. You've raised the bar even before you appreciate what you've accomplished. 
you're also a big old control freak. And we did a whole other episode on control. Control, as Janet Jackson would say. Part of that is, see how it kind of all works together. It's a puzzle and all these little pieces. And if we work at one, it's going to support you in another area. We're clearing that clutter. As we do one, it's going to help the other. So you might try to want to control everything so it's just right. And if you're feeling really out of control internally, then a lot of times it's going to show up that you're going to try to control your external environment. So that might be trying to control your wardrobe. Uh, that might be trying to control someone else. You can get caught up in trying to control someone else, although we have no control over someone else. Someone recently blame me for a friendship ending. And I was like, gee, thanks. I wish I had that much control over my friend, but he's a pretty independent thinker. Then instead of owning what you did in the friendship to push him away, you're trying to do the blame game on me. So you might be trying to control another person if you're a perfectionist. Look to that. Where do you try to control? Or you try to control a situation. And again, a lot of times, a lot of things in life are out of our control. We can only control what we think, feel, do and act. Depression goes hand in hand with this. Well, you can understand that. You might be beating yourself up a lot and you can wall on those negative feelings. If you have all these unrealistic expectations and they're constantly, you can't meet them, well, of course you're going to be bummed out. Defensiveness. Remember, this makes sense as well. It's scared and painful to be seen less than perfect. And for someone that's a perfectionist, this is a huge deal. Others can be like, eh, they see me less than perfect. I don't care. But because this is at the core of who a perfectionist is, that can be really painful and scary. If someone were to, you feel like that's what I mentioned earlier, like you're pulling the wool over someone's eyes and someone's be like, aha, she's not perfect. He is not perfect. So you can understand why the defensiveness comes in. Low self-esteem can also be another sign. And you tend to have an isolated path. You're lonely. You might be pushing people away in a way. And again, don't beat yourself up about it. This is about recognizing. This is about awareness. What am I doing here? Do I have perfectionist tendencies? And you, your ego is doing the best job that he or she can. The low self-esteem, you don't want others involved because you're so self-critical and happy and you might be pushing people other pe pushing other people away and that's okay remember because we're taking awareness and we're going to take action and then fear which remember fear is false evidence appearing real i think we either come from fear or love again i boil it down to feeling not good enough feeling worthy or love use the words that work for you but really examine what's the fear that's driving that, the fear that you won't be loved. Well, if they know I'm not perfect, maybe my parents won't love me if I get a 1600 on the SAT. I think that's still a valid score. Or if I don't score a touchdown every game, then I'm not going to be seen as good enough by the team and the coach. Uh, if I don't get a full scholarship, to go to the college of my choice and I'm not worthy because I was really worthy, then I'd be getting a school, a full scholarship. Why do we try to be perfect? We're trying to find acceptance, approval, love. But when you look outside of yourself for that, that doesn't lead to fulfillment. I talked about an aha moment before meeting my husband. I decide whether or not I'm happy. Tony can absolutely and absolutely does on a daily basis enhance my happiness. But ultimately, it's up to me whether or not to be happy. And we're human. Of course, we want approval. Of course, we want love. Of course, we want to be accepted. Talked about fears a moment ago. What's your fear? Rejection? That you're unlovable? That you'll fail? That you'll be abandoned? It's huge for a lot of people. Or humiliated. I've been humiliated before. It's not a fun place to be. Or maybe you're worried you'll be ignored. I see that all the time. Or not good enough. What would you add to this list? What is your fear? Is it being rejected? 
Remember, this is all coming from our ego. The ego is trying to navigate and to the ego's mind or being, perfectionism is safe. While these other emotions and feelings could be dangerous. If I'm abandoned, how will I take care of myself? Well, of course you'd understand why your ego's trying to be perfect. Are you surrounded by clutter? Are you exhausted from the stress your clutter creates? Are you anxious every time you walk into your home? Do you long for peace of mind? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how I can support you. You might also be trying to live up to society's expectation. That's just a barrel full of monkeys, blah. I know when I lived in Los Angeles, I was trying to live up to this standard of how my body should look. Never going to happen. Even when I was skinny and my bones were sticking out, my hip bones were sticking out, I still wasn't thin enough according to Hollywood standards. And the thing that's crazy with society, the expectations keep shifting. You know, Rubenesque women used to be the ideal, and now sadly we're on the stick then. I'm hoping that we're going towards healthy and that ultimately that's where we'll end up. But society's expectations are going to shift, so you're kind of on the shifting sand there. Things that you can't control and most of the time really can't live up to. And that's another way, that's another exhausting way to live. You don't want to live your life like that. You could be masking. To not show your real or authentic self. You might not want to share what you're feeling or seeing or experiencing. So put that mask on. And I would say, again, this is only through a lot of personal development, a lot of work. I wore a mask for a really long time and wasn't even aware of it. And now I'm like, you know what? This is me. Take it or leave it. And it's all good. You take it, fantastic. You don't. It's all good. I wrote something in my book, I think, about Something along the lines of, I hope this really supports you. And if it doesn't, I hope you find what does. I can't take the burden of not being me if it bothers someone else. It's like if you shine your light and that upsets someone else, next, move on. And have a moment of compassion. Because perhaps the kid that gets bent out of shape, I always like to think of election. I love that movie. Great movie with Reese Witherspoon. And Maybe the kid who needs to have straight A's is being abused at home. You never know what's going on. So when you hear that, you can, of course, feel compassion and can understand why someone have a mask. What mask are you wearing? Who do you wear it around? Is perfectionism one of your masks? And then, of course, you know, whatever happens to us in childhood ultimately influences us. I had a friend who was beaten as a child and She told me the story that her dad beat her when another kid wrote on the sidewalk in front of her house. He had a crush on her, so wrote something in front of her house. So what she learned and what she internalized was it wasn't safe to mess up. And so when we internalize something's negative, then we think we're flawed. So we already start out with this false premise that we're flawed because we're perfect exactly the way we are. We're imperfectly perfect. So you can understand how that might be driving someone to be a perfectionist because I could suffer physical consequences if I'm not perfect. And again, you know, once this stuff sets, it's you got to do some work to release it. So how do we stop being perfect? Just the facts, ma'am. Be like Joe Friday. Are your thoughts real or are those your interpretations or perspectives? Are you jumping to conclusions? Will will this matter in a day or two or a week or a year? What's the worst that could happen? Let go of the all or nothing mindset that I mentioned earlier. It can be done because I've done it. Uh, I read this fact, which was really interesting. Silicon Valley is known to encourage failure, and, and even strongly. 
entrepreneurs are often giving talks sharing their own failures. People there live by the mantra, fail fast, fail often. And apparently they even have an annual conference called FailCon to encourage people to embrace failure. I love this. I think this is so fantastic because I get now why it's Silicon Valley and why they have so much success. Because they recognize that failure is the path to success. And by failing, you're going to learn really quickly what works and what doesn't and be able to grow and move forward. Allow yourself to do things incompletely, imperfectly, and imprecisely. Get messy. That's how you can then progress to the state of completion and precision. Focus on maximizing your progress every step of the way, including through experimentation and failure. Because as I mentioned earlier, with FailCon, all those entrepreneurs and guys are going to say, that's how you learn. That's how you're able to succeed. You know, Michael Jordan, something crazy, greatest basketball player of all time. Well, that might be debatable. I'm not a basketball expert, but he was pretty awesome. I think, didn't he get cut from junior high? Kept working, kept working. Look where he ended up. Now, perfectionism can have some good qualities. So if you are super perfectionist, maybe dialing it back is your first step and being a perfectionist in moderation. If you're positively motivated by high standards and use that to move forward, that's fantastic. Stay committed to your goals and don't let your failures weigh you down or define you. You are you. I am Julie Caraccio. If this podcast fails, that doesn't define who I am. If my books fail, that doesn't define who I am. I am Julie Caraccio. From the Sinead O'Connor song, the serenity prayer, accept what you can change, what you can't change, and know the difference. When you are criticizing others, and check in with yourself, be honest about that, that's a defense mechanism. When we're kind to ourselves, it allows us to be kind to others. When we judge another, we judge ourselves. It's all interrelated. What do you love and appreciate about yourself? Make a list where you can see it. Be very aware, okay, I can change if I need to lose weight. That's something I can change. I can control that to a certain amount with genetics, but you know what I'm saying. If you are 30 pounds overweight, most likely you can go to the gym to change that. You can't change your genetics. I'm built like my mom. My weight is held in my upper arms and my stomach. Even I was thin, that's where the weight was. I will never have guns. It's just, I'm, you know what, I'm okay with that. And I know the difference. So I don't make myself crazy trying to have guns when it's never going to happen. Celebrate it all. The good, the messy, the incomplete. Just Enjoy it. That's what we're here to do with life. Embrace it. Embrace good enough. You know, I was researching and someone else did a podcast and I just wanted to hug and kiss them because I'm working with a new client now. I'm really excited who's coming out with the podcast and she's an entrepreneur like me. And one of the things I said is don't get caught up in editing because you can edit. It's sometimes if I had an interview and it was, you know, a friend and I want to do it really well took me a couple hours to edit. And so that's one of the things, and I talked about this probably a year or two ago, I embrace being good enough when it comes to editing. Someone criticized it, and I've just decided, said my sound was off. I'm like, I've got a pro mic, I do some editing. I just decided that this person had dog ears, and no matter what, wasn't going to be satisfied. So I embrace, you know what, good enough editing. It's not perfect, but I'm not going to hire someone because that's not where I need to put my resources right now and it's good enough and if someone doesn't like it that's okay there are a bazillion other podcasts that they can find that have superior editing and I'm okay with that I've embraced it lower the stakes take a deep breath and relax have fun when you find yourself starting not to laugh I'm really fortunate my baby brother and his son Max 
Max is exactly like Justin, which can drive me up a while to harm you. But Max is my brother as a 12 year old. But that's good because you know what? Max makes me laugh at myself. If I'm getting a little too uptight, Max is there to remind me like, oh no, Gigi, we're going to have some fun here. So if you're starting to get stressed out, if everything's not looking perfect at your party, take a deep breath. You're there to have company. If the cake gets burnt or the dog eats an hors d'oeuvre, it's okay. Roll with it. Lean on your friends. That's what they're there for. Whoever your tribe is, whoever your posse is, lean on them. Say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying not to be such a perfectionist. Can you call me out when I need it? Love and respect yourself. Know you're good enough, you're worthy, and you're loved no matter what. Sometimes we can get that, but the no matter what trips us up because there's always, oh, except for this I am. Oh, but I did that, so not quite. Consider writing down what you've accomplished every day, or maybe at the end of the week, that might be a little more realistic, or maybe by the month, and see your worth there in black and white. I'm a huge fan of writing things down, and you know, if you want to do it on an app, that's fine, the computer, but when we see it in black and white there, that can make a huge impact. If you see that you manage to not give flip anyone off while driving. That's an accomplishment, especially if you're living in somewhere like Los Angeles. You got your kids off to school all this week in clean clothes. Accomplishment. If you gave 110% in the game, that's an accomplishment. So begin to write that down and recognizing that. And while you're doing that, talk positively to yourself. Talk about all the wonderful qualities. I'm beautiful. I love my eyes. Whatever it is, be very aware of how you talk to yourself. Are you mainly positive or are you mainly critical? And start monitoring those thoughts in your head because you might be surprised. I shared that I thought I was fairly positive. Mm -mm, not when I took a good look. Delegate. And I know this can be a real challenge for some. Find the right people for your support team. I've hired someone to help me with social media. I know a decent amount, but I need to get to the next level. So I know this is someone I trust as a professional, the person, oh, I feel so good to just shove that away from my plate and let someone else do it. So delegate. Be clear in your communication. Consistently have good communication throughout and share your expectations and that can, a lot of times, help avoid bumps in the road. For some of you that are perfectionists, it can be challenging to work with people. And if, I know I used to feel like it's easier, my mom would sometimes do this, ah, it's just easier for me to get it done, I can do it more quickly, and wouldn't give us a chance to do something, and wouldn't rely on us. So take a deep breath. Know that if you delegate it, someone might do it a little bit differently than you, but that doesn't make it wrong. You can have instructions, make sure that you're communicating, but they are not you. And again, that's embracing that good enough. Being like, you know what, it got done. If there's a, they misspell something on social media, guess what, I'm going to live. I'm not going to worry about it. Take actions from today's podcast. Figure out where you tend to be a perfectionist in your life. Explore how your perfectionist tendencies show up. Depression, defensiveness, etc. Acknowledge how your perfectionist tendencies have negatively affected others. Understand how needing to be perfect has harmed you. Explore why you feel the need to be perfect. Create a plan to release your perfectionism. Love and respect yourself. Know you are good enough, worthy enough, and loved no matter what. 
on our next episode, we're talking about what is past its expiration date. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire.